what a joy having you back with us again. Welcome to Choices. We welcome all of you across Guyana, Jamaica, and wherever you view Choices. We are coming to you from our beautiful country, Guyana, a place where God lives. Also, a place where you can discover one of the largest and most powerful birds in the world, the Harpy Eagle, often called the Flying Wolf. Guyana, with its vast stretches of undisturbed rainforest, has one of the healthiest populations of the Harpy Eagles. Stay tuned with us. God bless you. Last week we began looking at the level of violence we see in our society and explore ways that we could actually tackle um, this level or increase the level of, of violence. Um, we, we noted earlier that lots of the violent behavior we see um, in our society uh, is as a result of persons not listening on the part of the abusers as well as those who are abused. Um, parents also needed to make a legitimate effort to teach children right from wrong. The whole question of morality um, is important in terms of dealing with, with this particular um, phenomenon. And men must give leadership. We also observe that because fathers are not in position, um, they are not taking the lead role, families are being exposed and um, young boys in particular, they are left um, you know, to, to the vagaries of life and many of them become entangled with violent activities because of no discipline. And we cited Deuteronomy 6.4 where it was clearly stated by Moses you know, that we are to teach and train and uh, ensure that these values are instilled in our children um, and generations to come. We can't run away from the fact that in our society this is a plague, it is a scourge, and if we're going to deal with it frontally and effectively, um, there must be collaboration with the home, the school, and the community. So we must not cover up. When we cover up things, we will not solve the problem. And so we want to explore ways in which we can actually deal with this scourge, gentlemen. You know, today we have with us a tremendous brother and colleague, Brother Cornell Millington. On behalf of the set of choices, we take this opportunity to welcome him back with us. Thank you, Brother Paul. Welcome back, Brother Billy. You know, Pastor Singh, as you spoke, you spoke about my national word. I am so fascinated with the RP Eagle that I will, I will make the RP Eagle the national word of the other. But that's my choice, you know. Um, as we ended the program um, last week, I think it was Bishop who brought to our attention the whole issue about of how we seem to be losing our sense of celebration of life. And you know, he, he made a comment that he caused me to go and research. And so today, uh, permit me for a second or a few seconds to, to quote a few lines from a song that uh, Lionel Richie did. He said, the first time I saw you, oh, you look so fine. And I had a feeling one day you'll be mine. Honey, you came along and captured my heart. And now my love is somewhere lost in your kiss. When I'm alone, it's you that I miss. Girl, a love like yours is hard to resist. Oh, oh, and you continue to pen you up. And I found as I researched this that the comment is so true that we become such a hard people, such so insensitive to our own needs and of the needs of our brothers, that we seem to develop a culture of beating and killing. And if we could rebuild that capacity that God has placed within us to become sensitive to each other, to him first, to ourselves and to each other. This whole issue of, of violent crimes will reduce because I believe because we don't like ourselves, we not only kill ourselves, we find it easy to kill others. So I pray from the home, 
from the environment of the family or the institution of the family, it is important that we go back to the place of celebrating life and work. You know, this is um, remarkable that you quoted Lionel Richie. Um, that was a time um, when in our culture, the culture around the world, we celebrated, uh, we celebrated human life in such a way where men did not abuse women to the extent that is happening presently. Men celebrated um, women and it's, a, it's amazing um, and wonderfully captured in, 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 in those lyrics. Um, it's not about hip parade uh, this evening, but when you listen to the lyrics of uh, the songs done by Sam Cooke, you know, some of those guys, women were celebrated. Now women are abused, kicking she back door. I mean, this is an amazing. This, these things are not just songs. These things, are, they provide a mirror to our soul. That is what it is. And you could imagine if a night of entertainment you sing in it, you sing in those kinds of songs and the other songs that people uh, have popularized and sing. Guess what's going to happen in the everyday practice? Some people will do it literally, whatever that means. People will do it literally and it's going to go back and forth. And so we need to bring into our culture again songs um, that celebrate. Um, but not only songs that celebrate. As we examine the violence, we really believe, and our thesis is, that the home is a place where we can <coughs> set the stage for life. And that's why we do not subscribe that children should have children. Yeah. Because children are not mature enough to deal with the major responsibility of rearing and caring an offspring. They themselves are still in the process of being mentored and being molded to, to add that burden of a, a young child to someone who's already a child. It's, it's problematic in very many ways. And what are you seeing in our society? We are reaping the harvest of, of such laxity and um, such an experiment that has gone really wrong. So we want to advocate again that we have a sense of maturity before we go in that direction. And we want to advocate again discussions at the table, the breakfast table we used to call it, um, discussions at the breakfast table where we live or on the landing or on the front step or on the back step or on the workbench or the hammock, we want to have, we want to recommend that the adults, the mature ones, have discussions and listen. We, we also said people are not listening. This is one of the, another reason why we have um, the kinds of problems that we have. Listen to a young man writing about his father. Um, in Proverbs chapter 1. Listen, my son, to your father's instructions and don't reject your mother's teachings. For they will be a garland of grace on your head and a gold chain around your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, don't be persuaded. And then, these sinners could be professional people. These sinners are not only random officers in the street, they could wear, wear uniforms. They, they could be um, decked in you know, all kinds of even religious frocks and so on. And they were like, if sinners entice you, don't be persuaded. Listen to this scenario. If they say, come with us, let us ambush and kill someone. You go to work, eh? Let's attack some innocent person just for fun. Let's swallow them alive like hell, still healthy as they go down to the pit. We'll find all kinds of valuable property and fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot with us and we'll all share our money. My son, 
don't travel that road with them or set foot on their path because their feet run toward trouble and they hurry to commit murder. It is foolish to spread a net where any bird can see it. But they set an ambush to kill themselves. They attack their own lives. This is what is happening when you become a part of that. You know, you might be on the streets, you might be at work, and you see somebody abusing somebody else. That person is setting an ambush for all of you. So you have to have this decency to say, I'm not a part of this, y'all stop this. You know, and then don't leave the rest of society to try to defend it, that particular action. We have to be able to teach our children yeah. to deal with these issues like this. I got, I got my first job in the year 1984. My wages then was $40 a week. He must be a very old man. Much <laughs> 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 old man. And I, out of that 40, I would give my mom 20, keep 20 for myself. We did not have many buses those days, the yellow buses. It was, it was a custom to walk to work and so on for miles. The guys in the community said to me, you stupid or what? How are you going to go to work for 40 dollars? I said to them, not only am I earning, but I'm learning because I was yes. in the trade. Yes. And out of that money, I, I started a savings account at GNCB then. And every week I would go into that place with $5 to put on my savings account. And this elderly woman would meet me, she said, Sonny, you reach $100 yet? And I would smile. Um, looking at what Solomon reflected here, I could have adhered to the instructions of those guys who lived mm -hmm. in the community. Excellent. But where would it have gotten me? Today, I am living a more productive life. One, not only because of the principles that were laid out in those days, but secondly, because of my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to encourage young men out there. The, the bottom line is that ill-gotten gain will not be beneficial to you in the long run. Take your time. Develop yourself, allow God to do what only He alone can do in your life so that you can be a benefit to your family. You know, we see Solomon here, you know, valuing the, the, um, the sanctity of life, um, even as the, the, the scripture was read just now. And, uh, you know, how you should value life, the importance of life. Because, um, you know, growing up, you know, people will come and tell you different things. Let us go rob somebody, let us go choke somebody. I mean, I came out of an environment like that, you know. Um, but what will keep you? It is the impartation of, 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 of that value for life. And this whole thing about, about morality, what is right and what is wrong. Sometimes you get a sense as though people are not, you know, they, they don't understand the difference between right and wrong. And we heard earlier that it is so important that this is done within the context of the family where training is important. I mean, as an education officer, I can tell you, the teachers who, who for example, complain to me, they said, we send for parents so that we can tell parents exactly where children are faltering and give them the assistance that they need. And you get remarks like, of course, these are young people. I ain't got the time. I get on a hustle right now. And so, um, you know, when we want to make children, that, that's a real, that's a big people, and people who are matured and who have an understanding as to how God really wants us to operate. So, I, I like this portion of scripture here because the people will come and lure you. Let us go and do this. Could you imagine you get in a, you, you, you were asked to kill somebody for five thousand dollars? If you value life, you, you won't kill anybody for nothing. No matter what people offer you, because you understand morality, what is right. And what is wrong? My it's brother, kill. my what? brother, you know why? Why I found interesting here is that Solomon's father is actually telling him, not just don't shed innocent blood, but he's actually teaching him that innocent blood cries out to the Lord for vengeance. Mm -hmm. So when you shed innocent blood, you believe you get off, but you have already set a course that God coming after you. Why? Because the innocent blood 
God eat hands that shed innocent blood. And those that blood calls out to God. God avenge my killer. I believe, you know, we are we are too busy as a people. And we allow, you know, our schedules to really impede our teaching. And when I look at, at Solomon here, uh, being um, the recipient of, of this kind of information from his father, you know, David had a lot of work to do. But look at the careful line upon line, precept upon precept, the instruction that he would have been given. I mean, we live in a society today that we are bombarded every single day by, by, by factors that help to raise our children. So you could be living right here with your family and a singer from the United States of America is helping to raise your child, yeah. singing all kinds of, 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 of things that you are not necessarily in favor with. You know, and so what, what we need to do is to find that time, just like what David did. He was, he was commanding chief and all, but he found that time to allow those values to run deep because what he is competing against, what we would be competing against, is not easy. So we got to lay a serious foundation, train up a child in the way. Traveling through, tra traveling through Haiti. I saw something that uh, for the first or the second day, I didn't know what it was. Uh, but in Port Prince, they were like gambling, official gambling spots, businesses betting shops and when I because like every every five minutes or less than that interval you see these things and I wanted I asked them what is that written in Creole Creole French they told me these are betting shops and I asked bet how could be and there are lines outside there's poverty all over so people were unemployed I don't know where they got the money from but an opportunity was given to them to take a chance. Um, all they have to do is um, understand the whole notion of probability. In order for one person to win, very many must lose. You know, that's the basic theory of probability. If I remember correctly, that was Blaise Pascal, right? You know, in order for one person to win, many must lose. And uh, if you have sense, you're going to recognize you could use your money better. What frightens me is that as I drive around Georgetown now, I am seeing evidence of that same kind of thing creeping up in our society. Opportunities, there is some name they have there. And as I'm inquiring, I'm discovering that these things are, that's exactly what it is. Now, if these folks are unemployed, Ask yourself the question, and they want to become involved in in in, in, in placing a bet, in, in, in waging. Where are they getting the money from to do that? So you have these kinds of lures. Hear the lure. Listen. If you come with us, all kinds of value property, we will have it to fill our houses with plunder. Uh, throw in your lot with us and we'll share our money. You know, this is the lure. If you come, come, come on, this is your friend telling you that. This is your colleague at the office telling you that. Listen, if we, if we just sign up this check here, we could have money, you know. Uh, we can do all these things. But what they don't tell you is the end. And this is what this father said to his son. Well, we, we are pleading with you to have this discussion long before in every home. The whole idea is if we do this, we, can, we will not only postpone, but we will prevent yes. the possibility of these things happening. So, so. If we engage our, our, our children, our neighbor's children, if we engage them in these kinds of discussions. So let's begin the conversation. So Solomon would not have been introduced to these things for the first time when he got in the job. Exactly. No, because David would have taken the time to share this, and this is what we've seen. So this, this guy, Solomon, eventually became a head of state. Could you imagine, within his frame of reference, he could have, as he was interacting with the, 
other um, leaders of nations and um, with resources and so on, he had a framework that he could have handled this. When you go to work, you know, there's a direct correlation between a 19 year old, 25 year old, 30 year old at work and the training he received or she received when they were young. It is not just because they have, they have 24 CXEs that they are going to be able to manage and negotiate the trials of, of, of life. So we, we give them power, we give them authority, we give them, we arm them, the state arms them with a lot of power. But who check to see the structure, the framework, the value system that they have? And then we all cry when we when when the the thing blows up in our face we all ball and we look to blame somebody it's easy to blame other people we need to take responsibility and go right back so let us deal with those that we have in our care now those same little children who sit around this television set you have a duty parents take a scripture like this and explain it to them and show them listen those who do these things you know, such are the parts of all who make profit dishonestly. Mm -hmm. However you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Whether you're putting a gun mm -hmm. or you're using some sophisticated means to extract from people mm -hmm. what you should not extract from them. All this is the part. It takes the lives of those who receive it. And if you become involved in it, this is what this is your come, not hey, listen. The jury is not meeting to pronounce in this matter, you know, the verdict is already in. You know, this is the pronouncement, this is the path, nobody can change this. Hey, what's all about? Hey, what David continued to tell his son? He's teaching, and this is in Proverbs 6, here we tell it. He said, here are six things God hates, and one more that loots with passion, eyes that are arrogant, a tongue that lies, Hands that murder the innocent, a heart that hatches evil plots, feet that raise down to wicked trap, a mouth that lies on the earth, and a troublemaker in family. You can imagine these kinds of instructions. This father is saying, son, don't go in this direction. And we are saying to our young people, we are saying to parents, this is what this is what is required for this nation. This is what is required for our families. This is what is required for our community. Don't go down this track. It is deadly. You know what we should do? Let's take some time to listen to instructions. If we really spend time listening to instructions given, like we do, those songs that you listen to, it's instructions that is given to you. And if you listen to the wrong instruction, you obey. So we're saying to you today, take time to listen to the instructions that come from the Word of God. Because it brings life, health, and holiness. It is your duty as parents. God has given you the responsibility to raise these children. The Bible clearly says that children are the heritage of the Lord. So we are mere, let me say, custodians. We have this privilege. And if we fail to instruct them, they will get the instructions from outside and from all over the place. So we have a duty. It's like an examination. The common knowledge, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. So we must not fail to prepare our children for the life ahead. So what do we do with those who uh, run a foul as an adult? Now, lots of people like to quote Romans chapter 13. But permit me to look at, let's look at it, verse 1. Everyone must submit to the governing authorities, everyone. Everyone must submit. This is Paul arguing the place for authority in the state, the place for justice in the state, the, the, the place for good governance in, in any given state, the place for all of these correct things. He says everyone must submit. Everyone must submit. 
become a situation where, as George Orwell said, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. Everyone must submit to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. This is a very powerful statement. The authority does not come out of um, some document or it, it comes from God. God is the source of all authority. And, and this fact has eluded our minds. We believe that we are the authority. Some people really believe that, you know, that they are. For there is no authority except from God. And those that exist are instituted by God. So then, the one who resists the authority is opposing God's command. So whether the person who has, who has been clothed with authority, who looks in a, in a particular way, but does uh, take, takes matters into his or her own, and they are opposing the authority of God. It's, 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 as simple, it's as simple as that. And it, it says this. And those who oppose it will bring judgment on themselves. Did I hear someone make a reference? That if your heart is, you can you know, feel. <laughs> the thing about it is, is that the, uh, an adage like that is so powerful. But listen to the word. So then the one who resists the authority is opposing God's command. And those who oppose it will bring judgment on themselves. Listen to this case for rulers. Rulers are not a terror to good conduct. Rulers are not a terror to good conduct. You see, I am not afraid to be stopped by police on the road. It, might, it could be inconveniencing. I know me, I don't have anything on me. I don't use anything. I, I just go about my business. They are not a terror to me. I was stopped, you know, many times. And um, it's interesting, but we don't have time to discuss that. Rules are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good. The, re the, 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 the remedy is very powerful, and you will have its approval. This assumes that authority will protect good. This assumes that authority in itself is not bad. This assumes that authority is good. So, do what is good. When we return next week, we'll pick this up from right here. In the meanwhile, be blessed. This week. We thank you for being part of Choices. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I am Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.